are you thinking that the scene is safe to approach the patient? I believe so. Okay, then go ahead and approach the patient. So how are you going to check the airway on a patient that has potential spinal Do a jaw thrust. Yep, you're going to put your thumbs on his cheekbones and then try to push up and open it up. What do you see? Oh, ah. gosh. Ah, he's what? bleeding from the mouth. He's bleeding from his mouth. Okay, so does that mean that he has a patent airway? Does that mean he's breathing correctly? I mean, no, is he breathing not. very well? What well, do you need to do to get the blood out of his airway? Um, I need to roll him over. Yep, because that's more important than a potential spinal injury. All you got to do oh, is keep gonna... it. You're going to grab him on either side of his head and just keep it in line. And we're going to roll him roll up right up on your knees. knees. One, at the... two, three. <laughs> All right, is it draining out of his mouth? Yep. Can anybody see into his mouth to see if there's any more blood coming out? Doesn't look like it. All right, so we're assuming that the airway is, for the most part, clear now. How's his pulse? It's there. It's there. And it's not crazy. Is it present in all four extremities? Um, it's present here and here. Yeah, okay. All of his pulses are present. A, B, C, D, deformities. Deformities. Um, no, just a weight problem. <laughs> and E. Yeah, he's laying on a cold ground, so we're going to need yeah. to get this so get this done quickly. Oh, man. And you know, try to cover up his exposure as much as possible. So let's get that covered up real quick. So he's Purple generally <laughs> unresponsive. Let's do a real quick survey, check for any broken bones, any crepitus, any bleeding deformities. Go ahead, real quick. Next, okay, seems like. So he's probably safe to move. Check the pelvis. Go down one leg, then the other. Oh, oh, it, oh, it, it was a response. Go back there. So we have a potential broken knee. One of the most common backwoods injury. Somebody gets a hatchet or an axe. <laughs> Take that away from me. I'm in shock. Okay, hold on, okay, hold, hold, on, on. hold on. You gotta clean it first. Oh, yeah. How bad is the bleed? <sighs> That's sterile. <laughs> so is the bleeding for the most part stopped? <laughs> <laughs> You want to flush it really, really well to get any like creepy, crawly nasties out of the wound. And if it continues to bleed through that one, then you put another one on, and then you can probably elevate. So you the want it to get to the point where Good. you can pull the bandage off, and it still doesn't Pressure, start bleeding. Pressure, elevate, yes. and then wrap. And then, yeah. and it's still not going to start bleeding again when you okay. flush it out. Like okay, thank you. Like, it, it could, but you, that's, you could try that. I think what the issue was is people weren't applying it properly. And that's why they did away with doing the digital pressure to the, the femoral artery, the brachial artery, like all of those things. Mm. So. There you go. Oh! oh! What do you do, guys? Well, we, have, oh! we have a oh! we have a what? Oh! Amputation. Oh! Okay. How do you treat an amputation? <laughs> you save the piece. Oh, nice and finger. And you stop bleeding. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to deal with this part first. <laughs> just wrap this up really No, nice. deal with that second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to stop the bleeding first. Well, it's Even not, though there really is surprisingly little bleeding for the most part with injuries like this. Now, if he was to cut off his arm, obviously that would be different. But for like fingers and toes, surprisingly, yeah, do that, Mike. it kind of stops on its own. So this is not bleeding, so I can just dress this, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> The reason why they don't want you to put it directly on ice is because the ice can potentially freeze and it will burst the cells and it will kill it, essentially. Yeah. You want to wrap it in clean, sterile gauze that's moist to, to keep it from drying out. If you don't have that, you do what you can. Yeah. Plastic? You, yeah, you wrap it and then you put it in a plastic bag. Because you want to keep it cool. You don't want it, you don't that's want to freeze finger. it. That's my finger. You don't Mike's want to finger. freeze it. He really cut his finger off just for this class. <laughs> this is dedicated teaching. Yeah. Or stupidity. And then you keep it cool. <sighs> you don't want it to freeze and you don't want it to dry out is what you're going for. Okay. And with an amputation, you're going to want to eat that. Jerk. Grab my cup of finger and go. You have no idea how much anxiety that causes.